Well, hi everyone, Cory Barker here, and in this video, we are going to take a look at a really cool vanishing point trick here in Photoshop. Now, I had done a motion graphics class in Photoshop CC in Atlanta at Photoshop World um, uh, last week, and it went over really well, and everybody really liked this cool vanishing point trick. And the funny thing is, it's actually been in Photoshop for a couple of versions now. Um, really, really, ever since they've introduced 3D, it's been available in there. And... Um, now that the 3D has gotten much more um, smoother and everything's functioning a little bit better, it's, uh, it's, it's really kind of a good time to revisit the trick because you can actually not only create the three-dimensional space from a 2D image, but you can also animate it and do all kinds of cool stuff like that. So what you need to start with is an image that has the depth needed to define. Like in this case, I've got this center shot looking down a hallway, and you want it to have it as centered as possible in order to get this effect to look um, as real as, as real as it's going to be. So with this image open, I'm simply going to go to the filter menu and go down here and choose vanishing point. Now it's going to open the large vanishing point window here and it goes ahead and selects the grid tool. Now the vanishing point was originally designed to allow you to edit images in perspective, meaning you could do things like do cloning and rubber stamping and such like that and make, um, retouching corrections by defining a three di or not a three dimensional but rather a perspective grid and then being able to do the edits on that grid the few interesting byproducts of that is you have the ability to define an area with a grid and then return it to photoshop as a 3d layer so i'm just going to go ahead and start on the left wall here and just click to establish the first point of a grid and i'll go ahead and just define this side wall here and notice i'm going outside the area of the canvas because I'm going to have to in order to be able to encompass the whole wall here. And we'll just do that. Now, when the box is red like this, it means it's not an accurate perspective. So you just need to tweak the positioning of the grid just a little bit until it turns blue, just like that. So just sometimes just a little nudge will just make it go ahead and do that. There we go. So once you see the, gr the blue grid, you're now ready to define the remaining areas. Now, you simply hold down the Command key on Mac, Control on Windows, and position your cursor over the center control handle here in the back wall, or in this back corner here. And I'm simply just going to command click and drag out that back wall plane. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. I'm just going to go ahead and again command click on the center target, drag out the wall on this side, and we'll go ahead and drag out the wall, or the ceiling line here, and then we'll do go ahead and drag out one for the floor. Now I'm going to adjust this grid just a little bit. You can actually notice I can grab it and just slightly and change it and then I'll just slide this one over so it encompasses every area there. So now I have grids defined for both walls, the back wall, the floor, and the ceiling. So I'm going to go ahead and select all those, make sure they're all there. And here is where you will go into this little icon up here in the top corner. If you look in the upper left corner here, right here, here's the toolbar and all the various tools. But you also have right here this little tiny icon. If I uh, just hover over it, you'll see it says settings and commands for vanishing point. So I'm going to click on that menu and then choose right down here where it says return 3D layer to Photoshop. So go ahead and uh, select that item and then we're going to go back over and click OK here in the panel. Now it's going to go ahead and ask you, if you're using CC, it's going to ask you what size or what size uh, three dimensional file you want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and use the default numbers here. We'll go ahead and click OK. It's going to go ahead and return back to Photoshop as a three-dimensional object. Now, you'll notice here in the canvas, we don't really see a much of a dramatic change. But if you were to go and grab the Move tool, and then up here in the Options bar, we'll select the Slide tool, which is the fourth tool over here at the very top. And I'm going to go into the Window menu and open up my 3D panel. And here is where you can select the individual meshes. But I want to move the current view, which is my camera. And I'm just going to go ahead and just click and drag down and notice now we can move through the hallway in a very three-dimensional space, all created from that two-dimensional image. So if I go ahead and zoom back out here and just give the object a rotation, you can notice, you'll see, it is merely a 3D box with those the individual walls and ceiling elements uh, pasted on that 3D object. Now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and get that move tool and slide it back in. So as you get inside the grid, you'll notice that we've got the ability to travel through here. Now you'll get further back, actually, and you notice it tends to stretch the image. And this is, in, this is going to happen because you're stretching it uh, back in three-dimensional space, so it's going to get a little, lose a little um, detail. 
But what I like to do, and that actually works um, when you're doing an animation like we're going to do. So if I move this back to the beginning, and I'm just going to go into the window menu here and select Timeline. And that's going to bring up my Timeline panel here at the bottom. Here I'm going to go ahead and just create Video Timeline, and we'll twirl this down to reveal the various properties we can animate for this 3D layer. Things like opacity, uh, position, style. We can also animate 3D properties such as the camera position, render settings, cross-section, and even other individual elements like the lights, materials, meshes. So you can have a lot of fun animating 3D just here in Photoshop. But just to give you an idea of what we can do with what we have here, I'm going to go into the timeline panel and um, click and set a keyframe for 3D camera position. I'm just clicking on the little stopwatch icon next to the name. I'm going to grab the playhead here and just move it down the timeline at about three second mark. And then we're just gonna go and change that camera view. I'm gonna use that same slide tool, go in here and just click and drag down and move through the scene right to that back wall. Now you'll notice what happens here in the timeline panel. It went ahead and established a new keyframe because we've changed the position from the camera of the camera from this beginning point to this point. So if I bring the playhead back and we'll hit the play button here, you'll notice it's getting a little jumpy because it's rendering the frames as indicated by this green line at the top right here. But when it's done rendering those frames, in fact, let me pause it for the moment and then narrow the work area so we can see, or so it'll just stop here. Hit the play button. It's gonna render those frames, and then when we go back to the beginning, it's gonna fly through and have that really fluid movement going through there. And again, as I say, you can see those elements in the back, but this almost has this kind of you know, motion blur stretching to it. It really kind of works in the scene. You can actually go in and turn off that back wall, for instance, if I wanted to just turn that off here in the 3D panel and then just fill the background layer with black, then I can just, again, travel through here and I can have it end on a black screen like you're just going into uh, through the tunnel and then ending on a black screen right about there. It's just going to go pew. So there you go. So just to show you another cool, quick little thing, we've established the motion of the camera and it's going straight through the hole at the straight up basically. But what if at this middle point right here, we decided to tell the camera to, well, maybe give it a little bit of a turn. Well, not the object, but we want to change the view right here. And give it a little bit of a turn like this. And notice again, it establishes a new keyframe. So now if I go in and play this back through, when it approaches that angle, it's going to adjust. And then when it passes that new keyframe, it's going to readjust back to the straight position, which is also established in this keyframe here. So a lot of fun to be had just by taking simple two-dimensional images and then applying this vanishing point trick and then being able to take it into your video timeline all right here inside Photoshop and creating very realistic 3D animations.